How's it going guys? Coming at you with a little overview slash mini review of the Marlin 1894C. Uh, the C stands for center fire and it represents the 357 and 38 special caliber uh, carbine uh, that's produced by Marlin. This is a brand new gun, never been fired. And uh, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a neat little rifle. I mean, there's something about the lever action that I think is just classically sexy. Um, I think a lot of you guys will agree with me. Uh, similar, similar to like what a revolver feels like in your hands. You know, just something that is just kind of been around for a while. It's kind of an iconic shape and an iconic firearm. Uh, but this particular one from Marlin shoots the 357 38 Special. What's cool about that is it makes it so you can pair uh, your any kind of your standard um, 357 revolver with this gun to make it like a nice little pistol pistol rifle combination. So it's a great little prepper rifle. One of the things that I would say about this particular rifle is that it's one of the most comfortable rifles to shoulder. Uh, the ergonomics of of this rifle is just superb. And you know it feels really comfortable, very very natural on on you when you when you shoulder it. Uh, the buck this it comes with semi buckhorn sights. Come on in here, I'll show you these. Comes with semi semi buckhorn sights right there on the front there. Um, you know not the most not the most precision sights, uh, but definitely something definitely usable. Uh, what's nice about the Marlin uh, 1894C is that it ejects from the side and not from the top like like other uh, manufacturers do. And why that's important is because the Marlin's actually drilled and tapped the top of the receiver here so that you can actually put a scope mount on it. And there's various different manufacturers that actually produce scope mounts for this particular rifle. And because it ejects from the side, it doesn't interfere with the, with the scope at all. So that's kind of a nice little feature, something that a lot of people consider when they buy something like this. Um, the 357, coming out of this uh, 18 and a half inch barrel, actually has uh, quite a bit of, of of energy, um, probably more than double the energy of that fired out of a, a out of a four inch a four inch uh, revolver. You're looking at about between a thousand and twelve hundred foot pounds of energy from a 357 125 grain bullet coming out of this rifle. So it's definitely um, it definitely turns the 357 into a into a freight train for sure. You'll get some of the same advantages with a 38 Special, but you won't get quite as much power from a 38 Special. You'll actually probably get between 13 to 1500 feet per second with a 38 Special. So that's still um, in the 357 range. So it so it has a tendency that longer barrel tends to magnify the velocities a bit, giving you a bit more energy. The furniture on the gun is one aspect in which I think the gun lacks a little bit, as you can see. Uh, the finish is a little bit more of a natural finish. There's very little uh, varnish on it at all. Uh, Marlin, I can't remember what they call this finish. I think they call it a, a, like a, a mar resistant finish or whatever. But uh, for me, I would like to have a little bit more of a sheen, a little bit more uh, protection or varnish on the, the actual wood itself. Uh, but for the most part, it's, uh, it's, it's fine. Um, there is like gaps in the furniture next to the... Um, next to the metal there, the receiver. As some people uh, tend to criticize Marlin because of, of that, you know, the fit and finish isn't that great, but um, I think it's, I think it's um, definitely satisfactory. I don't think it's, it, it's superb, but I think it's, it's satisfactory. One of the things I've criticized Marlin for in the past is their mic micro-grooved rifling that they put in their barrels. Um, Part of the, the, the my biggest my biggest uh, problem with the micro grooving is that it causes a lot more friction inside the barrel with the bullet than than other uh, types of rifling, and because of that, I see lack of velocity uh, from from some of those barrels. This particular one has a uh, just your kind of more standardized uh, lands and grooves, so it's not micro grooved, and they're actually I can't remember exactly what they're what the um, rifling is called. I'll annotate it here, but. Uh, but anyway, it's cut a little bit deeper than your standard rifling, so it actually helps um, uh, reduce a little bit of friction. So I think that, that, that the rifling is a lot better on this. And that was one of the reasons why I bought this particular one, is I didn't want to have any of the, the micro-grooving in it. Safety features on this rifle include a half-cock setting, where you can actually half-cock it and um, it uh, locks up the trigger. And then once it's fully back, then you can let it go. Uh, it also includes this crossbar safety. As you can see right there, it says safe, and then there's fire on that, nicely re red painted uh, with the word safe on the other side, which is kind of nice. Um, you can actually f pull the trigger on safe, but it will not engage the, the, uh, 
the actual firing pin until until it's off the safe. Loading is, is done through the loading gate here and you just uh, pile rounds into the tube magazine which uh, holds nine rounds which is pretty good capacity so nine plus one um, is uh, for a total of ten rounds is pretty good when it comes to 357 Magnum. Action on the gun is actually fairly smooth um, compared to like uh, Rossi's and stuff like that that I've actually I've actually looked at a lot. The Rossi's have a tendency to be really really rough um, but um, this is actually, um, I've never fired this gun, I've never fired a cartridge through it, but I've dry fired it quite a bit and worked the action. And the action has, has seemed to smooth out quite a bit since I've gotten it. A lot of people have really criticized the 1894C for its trigger. Um, and I was really kind of uh, worried about it when I first looked at it. Uh, but after actually... Um, but I'm actually a lot more impressed with the trigger than I first first thought I would be. It is very heavy. It's probably in the seven pound range with just the tiniest bit of creep and a crisp release. So it's actually not a bad trigger. Uh, I've heard some people um, hate that the, the fact that it, the trigger flops around a little bit. I don't think it's a big issue. Um, for me, you know, it's as long as the as long as the let off is really really crisp. That's all that matters, and it is. So, uh, but you know, I hear a lot of people do a lot of trigger jobs on these when they first get them, and I think that's probably a, a good idea, uh, just to lighten the trigger up a little bit. I'd like to see a, more of a four pound or, you know, two a three to four pound trigger on it, but uh, for the most part, I think it's right around six. So, one of the things about the about the uh, lever here is that when I go to work the lever, if I'm not real careful, the, the bevel here on the on the uh, the lever is kind of a little sharp, and so I actually have a tendency to tear my fingers up if I'm not careful. Uh, but uh, not a huge not a huge issue unless you're going to be putting just a ton of rounds through it. Has a nice little uh, rubber butt pad on the end with uh, sling swivels there on both ends, and a really really nice blued finish on the on the receiver there. There you can see down into the chamber. The roles in which I put this rifle in is uh, primarily, I think, it would be a fantastic uh, prepper, prepper style rifle, you know, with uh, nine nine rounds, nine plus one rounds of 357. I think it's a great, a great rifle. But I think that it would really excel as a home defense, uh, home defense rifle. It's very, very uh, small and maneuverable. Uh, it's light at six pounds, and uh, you know, with the recoil and kick. That uh, that it'll have. I don't think it'll be. I think it'll be something that anybody uh, can use really, as long as they can they can shoulder and lift it. Uh, but for the most part, I think it'd be a great a great home defense rifle. I also think you know obviously that it's it's good for cowboy action shooting and stuff like that. But it'd also be like a nice little range a range rifle. So people that are uh, range riding or something like that, you know, it'd be a great little uh, coyote rifle, especially if you uh, if you scope it up. I think it'd be a great little, uh, great little range rifle for your horse. Um, throw it in your horse scabbard. It would be kind of cool to, to ride around with it. Plus, you know, you have that sexy uh, lever action look to it too. So, anyway, guys, this has been just a quick little overview slash mini review of the Marlin 1894C. Uh, just a fantastic rifle. I may or may not keep it. It just kind of depends. Um, but uh, you know, I had some. I had some plans for it, but I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna move on to something a little bit different. But uh, for the most part, just a just a sweet sweet little rifle. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate rate this video, subscribe for more videos just like this in the future. Go ahead and share it with your friends um, if you like what you see. Uh, it does help the video out. Does help our channel grow. And I really really appreciate you guys watching. And uh, we'll catch you in the next video. See ya. How's it going, guys? Coming at you with a little bit of a concept video here with you today. Uh, and that concept is the idea of a portable rifle. And by definition, what I'm defining a portable rifle is, is something that can break down into smaller, more compact components. I have three examples of what I term a portable rifle. First is the Ruger 1022 takedown, which is a which is a standard 1022 that can be broken in half. And then we have uh, a Feather Industries AT22. This is one that I've never never put in front of the camera, which is a really kind of a cool little rifle. And we'll talk a little bit about it here in just a bit. And then we have the Keltec Sub 2000, which is a nine millimeter sub gun. And uh, a lot of you guys will recognize that as well. 
the uses of a sub gun really be really come in handy when you're talking about like a 